Why use chew toys? Because they're a great method to enrich your dog's life and they might even prevent your dog from destroying things around the house. But if you can't leave a dent with your nail on the toy, it means it's too hard and it might be dangerous for your dog. Stick around until the second half of this video to see the list of toys that I like using for those dog chewers or just skip ahead to that part. And also there's a pro tip at the end of this video. I'm Dr. Orion, a veterinarian and a veterinary behavior residency graduate. A common question that I get is should we give those rawhide treats for our dogs to chew? They last a very long time, dogs really love them, they get obsessed over them and they make them this white, slimy, gross thing. But you should think about them as junk food, actually even worse than junk food. But it's not just that. They have a tendency of being swallowed in big chunks or being swallowed whole by the dog and then causing gastrointestinal obstructions that might even be lethal. And how about antlers and bones? Well, they tend to be very, 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 very hard. And as I said at the beginning of the video, where is the triceratops? If you can't make a dent in them with your fingernail, they're too hard. That means that they might actually break your dog's teeth or damage the enamel. Also, they might cause obstructions and perforate your dog's gastrointestinal tract which is very, very dangerous. So here are some options that are safe and enriching to your chewer. Of course, there are many other options out there. So feel free to search, compare, and buy them. And if you do find something cool, please write down in the comments below. I'm always happy to learn. And if you're already down there commenting, please feel free to like and subscribe. That way you'll promote this video. And I'll really appreciate it. Kong. They have many different toys for chewers, but I'm talking about the original classical Kong that you can put some food inside and your dog can chew and lick and you know, try to get those treats from her. You can either hide treats inside, but you can use it to feed the dogs his entire meal. Choose a size and the difficulty level that fits your own dog. Snuffle mat. You can make one yourself, but if you're lazy like I am, you should probably just buy one. True, your dog doesn't really chew anything here, but he doesn't need to. The idea is to occupy him by getting him to search for the treats or food. Making him work for it is the goal. Leaky mat. This is another option to get your dog's chewing behaviors under control. You smear something, for example peanut butter, on the leaky mat it's very easy to wash it afterwards and it has many, many ridges which make it harder for your dog to just lick everything off in a second. Food puzzles. You can make them yourself or you can buy like 22 million different brands. Slow feeder bowls. Again, there are different kinds that you can buy online, but there are also easy ways to try and do it yourself at home. Pro tip. Don't leave the toys hanging around the house. Rotate between them. Dogs are kind of like toddlers. They will get bored very, very, very fast. So each day use one or two toys and then pick them up and replace them with two other toys. After a day or two, you can use the original toys again. Surprise! Pro tip number two. Don't let your dog get frustrated. If he can't figure it out, or can't get the treats out, he'll get very frustrated or will just lose interest. If you see that happening, help him out or just use something easier. By the way, you can use all of these tools to distract your dog or counter condition him while you're doing some nail trim. But whatever you do, do not smear peanut butter on your forehead and let your dog lick it while you're clipping his nails. If you want to learn more, check out this video.